at a traditional in-person Christmas Eve service, I'm not entirely sure anyone really listens to the sermon. I mean, the pews are packed with families, from babes in arms to toddlers and youngsters full of energy and excitement, to bored teenagers slouching down in the pews trying to get glimpses of their cell phone, to parents trying to keep everyone in line and everyone entertained, and the grandparents just sitting there enjoying the chaos. Some are hungry, anticipating a Christmas Eve feast, while others are already stuffed from the Christmas meal they had before they came to church. And they're trying really hard to stay awake, especially as the church goes, grows hotter and hotter from all of the people packed in the pews. And let's face it, most people are here on Christmas Eve to be with family because it's a tradition. Everyone knows the Christmas story. We hear it every year. Most people are here for tradition and for the music and for the family, not so much for the sermon. But maybe this year, maybe this year where once again so many Christmas Eve services are online, including ours, as many families scale back their ambitious Christmas plans to something smaller and quieter, maybe this year people will actually listen to the sermon. And maybe not. I mean, there's nothing really new to preach on Christmas Eve, but that is also part of the tradition. How do we present the same good news, the same story, in a way that makes sense to people's lives that year? Like last year, it is another COVID Christmas. But unlike last year, we are even more tired, we are even more fatigued, we are even more fed up and grumpy, and we're kind of surprised right, with all of the high vaccination rates and as case numbers were dropping in the fall, we were looking forward to this Christmas. It was supposed to be the Christmas where we were going to gather once again and it was going to be almost like old times. And yet here we are online again, thanks to the Omicron variant. And yet it's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve where we celebrate the birth of the Christ child and what that means for the world. This year, as we hear the Christmas story once again, I'm drawn to the shepherds for a number of reasons. When I think of shepherds and the kind of work they do, I think about people who are isolated, many of whom would have to work hard at overcoming their loneliness. They are isolated from their families and their communities as their work takes them out into the countryside for long periods of time. And they're often isolated even from each other as shepherds. Now, a few of them might come together at night, right, for some company or for some safety in numbers, but during the day and often in the night, they would be alone with their flocks of sheep. This sounds all too familiar for me after almost two years of COVID. In fact, I personally know of two people, not in this congregation, two friends of mine who are isolating right now because of they either have COVID or they are, um, have been notified that they were in contact with someone living in isolation. Shepherds were also an important and necessary part of the village. I mean, someone had to look after the sheep, but people who are isolated for too long, they grow uncomfortable around people. They may lack some of the social graces. And this too sounds familiar to me. This summer and fall, as, as things opened up, I found that I was uncomfortable when I felt like I was with too many people all at once or crowds or when people started intruding in my personal space or my expanded personal space because I had got used to this six foot apart thing. And I'm also a little grumpier. My, my stronger emotions are, seem to be closer to the surface and I seem to have less control over them. And I imagine the shepherds, they could be a little unkempt not a lot of opportunity or even reason for that matter for personal grooming. Now, truth be told, I probably have showered a little bit less over the last year. 
I sometimes have to remember, oh, I better comb my hair before I get on that Zoom meeting. And I have cut my own hair since the beginning of the pandemic. And truth be told, it doesn't take too much to entertain me anymore. A good back and forth on Facebook has me making some popcorn, just settling in to watch the antics. I can identify with the shepherds this year. The shepherds have this important and grand entrance in the Gospels. They are the first people to whom this good news of great joy is proclaimed. And this news was proclaimed in word by an angel before the entire sky exploded with light and music and song as the whole heavenly host sang praises to God. And they were promised a baby, and after rushing to the stable, they saw a baby. And they recognized that the rest of what they had been told is true. A Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And so they witnessed to Mary and Joseph and anyone else in the vicinity as to what they had seen, as to the angels proclaiming it and the angels singing it, and now what they have discovered there in the stable, in the manger. And then the shepherds disappear. Not only from the scene, they disappear completely from the Gospels. The shepherds were not called as disciples, nor did they continue to wander from town to town, proclaiming what they had seen or experienced. They were only the first witnesses, but they were certainly not the last. They encouraged Mary and Joseph, not only in the strange circumstances of Jesus' birth, but in the promises that they were given by God as God spoke to them through angels and Elizabeth, and now shepherds, and soon wise men, and then Anna and Simeon. The shepherds bear witness to Emmanuel, God with us, to the inbreaking of the divine into our human world and into their lives in particular, lonely and isolated lives. Friends, this Christmas, as we endure another Christmas of isolation and separation, as we grumble and as we complain and as we whine, we too are called to recognize and witness to the inbreaking of God into our lives and into our circumstance. It is the card or the phone call that we made to someone even lonelier than us or the card or the phone call from someone else to us that made a difference in our lives. It is seeing so many people get up and go to work every day to keep our country fed and housed and safe. We think of the obvious ones like first responders or teachers and most obvious of all healthcare providers. But we must also recognize and witness and celebrate those who are hidden, those taken for granted workers who are essential nonetheless in our pharmacies and our grocery stores, working in transportation, in trucking and railway and shipping and delivery services and buses. We think of those who grow our food or make our food and serve us. We think of farmers and cooks and serving staff. We think of people who work in the trades, who keep things running those who clean our schools and our hospitals, and those who work in long-term care. Wherever a kind word is spoken, wherever a generous act is performed, all of these things are indeed God's saving hand at work in our world. And like the shepherds, we are called to witness it, to celebrate it, just like that baby in a manger. For it was the shepherds these first witnesses that caused Mary to treasure their words and ponder them in her heart, because that's what witnesses do. We point to the truth of our experience so that others will notice and ponder. Luke shows us the first steps in a long journey of trusting that God's favor is indeed for all people and that there are signs of God's presence, even in the midst of our own darkness, the light is shining. 
Merry Christmas, and Amen. Our hymn, number 133, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> 